Thank you for worshiping with us. On Sundays, the side entrance opens at 8.15 a.m. and the front entrance opens at 9.45 a.m. Spread the word, Greater Is Here, on Heaven 106.7 FM every Sunday at 9 a.m. Sunday School is every Sunday at 9 a.m., in-house and virtual. To join Virtual Sunday School, log on to houseofgreater.org forward slash GSS now and click the Sunday School link. The Next Generation Youth Ministry Church is every second and fourth Sunday in Morton Hall at 1030 a.m. Bring your youth out to get involved. Congratulations to our senior pastor, Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson. Virtual Miracle Tuesday is every Tuesday at 12 noon, live on YouTube at GSS Miracle Tuesday Intercessory Prayer. Go Know, a city and community project for New Orleans East. Earn as you clean for males ages 16 and older. For more info, go to keepnolaclean.com. Sponsored by D.B. Morton Ministries. D.B. Morton Ministries and Greater Women of Excellence will be traveling to Dubai August 5th through the 12th, 2024. Travel with us and invite family and friends on this amazing adventure. For travel information, see a representative in the front lobby or log on to houseofgreater.org forward slash GSS now. Live full conference next is now. 2024 Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship International Conference in the Big Easy, New Orleans, Louisiana, July 9th through the 11th. Join presiding Bishop Joseph W. and Dr. Stephanie Walker III and founder and co-founder Bishop Paul S. and Deborah B. Morton, along with Bishop Jonathan Woods Sr., Elder Jasmine M. Robinson, Bishop William Murphy III, Dr. Linda Willis, Bishop Bobby L. McCarter, Sr., Pastor John Hanna, Consecration Service with Founder Bishop Paul S. Morton, and our worship encounter with International Presiding Bishop Joseph W. Walker III at the New Orleans Convention Center. Visit fullgospelconference.org today. Have you moved? telephone number changed. We'll update your contact information today at houseofgreater.org forward slash GSS now. Quick links. And we are praying for members who have lost loved ones or who are experiencing an illness. For funeral updates and a list of members who are sick and shut in, call the church or refer to the bulletin on the GSS website. For pertinent info and updates regarding our ministry, text GSS to 504-276-7021 or log on to houseofgreater.org forward slash GSS now.
Welcome to Greater Life, life lessons intended for everyone, where we are encouraging lifelong learners to navigate the seas of our changing society with the Word of God as our compass. Life learners, click, share, and grab a seat as we set sail on an engaging session. Welcome to Greater Life. We honor Father God, and of course, we honor our senior pastor, Bishop Elect Robinson, our First Lady, Elder Jasmine, and our overseers, Bishop Morton and Pastor D. In Mark chapter 6, after Jesus and the disciples finished feeding the 5,000, Jesus spoke and said, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Is God calling you? to a solitary place for restoration and relaxation. Here to give us guidance on selecting a destination for relaxation, lifelong learners, please welcome the owner of Godly Estates Travel, our own agent, Grandison. Grandison Gustain. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Elder. Oh, you're so welcome. You know, three years ago, we were literally in solitary confinement. Now that we've put that pandemic behind us, it's go time, yes. And uh, Agent Gustine, what are some reasons why packing our bags for a trip can be good for us as believers? Sure, I have two responses for that. Um, <clears throat> the first response is one that may quench you. We all get to travel only when someone dies. We shouldn't want to just travel to see a loved one laid to rest. True. And when we get to those loved ones, we stay maybe one or two days and we leave. Mm -hmm. It's time to expand your horizons. Yes, yes. Our motto this year is, it's go time. What are you waiting for? Go time. You can't operate out of fear. You can't operate of just being afraid. And it's go time. Secondly, we are all in a cultural state. City. Everybody loves New Orleans. We're so comfortable with New Orleans, nothing even matters to us anymore. Not even snowballs, Mardi Gras, Essence Fest, right, right. nothing. It's go time. It is go time. And yes, people are traveling here. We've got a lot to offer here. But uh, we get stuck in routine. And we, you know, have, we've got it all here. We don't want to take off and go anywhere. But what about uh, the relaxation of our bodies? You know, God said that our body is important. He calls it the temple, right? So we need to take some time out. You know, I remember as a child, all work and no play makes Jack a very dull boy. <laughs> so we've got to take some time out, you know, to relax and, you know, not be so uptight about everything because we wound too tight. What will you say about that? Well, what I have to say about that is, <clears throat> how many of you love yourselves? Amen. Some That's of the best answer I can say is if you love yourself, you will take care of your bodies. The Lord looks at your bodies as living temples. Let's, let's use, for example, your home. Are many of you neat? Keep your things tidy? Think about your bodies. What time is it? It's go time. Yes, indeed, it's go time. Now, seeing that the U.S. of A. is great, but there are so many that want to travel abroad. There are some things I'm sure we need to keep in mind when uh, deciding to do that, such as those shots, AKA immunization. So tell us about that. Um, sometimes I think as we think about travel uh, abroad, we don't think about all of the things that we've got to consider, such as. All righty. I don't know how many of you deal with sinuses. I'm not a prophet. I don't know how many of you deal with uh, high body temperatures. We all experience different 
natures of our body. Uh, that goes back to the scripture of your body being a temple. Um, if you know you're going afar, it's best that you consult with your doctor if you love and care for yourself. Um, that can be very emotional. That can also be a health-wise decision to yourself. But I do believe from the looks of everybody's faces, you all love yourself. Take care of yourself. Then think about goal time. But first, let's just start with you, which is basically common sense, and go from there. Awesome. Now, what about passports versus a visa, that global entry? What do we need to consider there? Okay. All right, needing a passport. A passport is needed for all international travel. However, a visa, the good thing about that is you don't need to get your visa immediately. When you hear passports and visas, my clients already think about money. It's not to scare you off, it's all to protect you. A passport is for your verification. You are a citizen of the United States. Consider yourselves worthy. Um, and a visa, say for example, I don't know how many of you all are going to Dubai, but from my research, you may want to take that trip and go. Um, a visa, you are able to purchase it at the airport for little or less than $25. Mm, really? That is all. So is there a big difference between the two? I mean, which one we really need first, or do we need them both? First, you need your passport. Okay. You want to be considered a U.S. citizen. It's okay for people to come to the United States, but you're going to another continent. This is a place you may not even know anything about. You want to be accounted for. Get your passports. It's up to you to get your visa once you arrive at the airport. Hey, you're going to spend at least five to $1,000 anyway. What's up with $25? That may be refundable if you stay less than 30 days. Now, going abroad, there are different laws than in the United States. And so there are certain things we may take for granted because we don't know. But if you're planning to go to a certain place, uh, wouldn't it be wise to maybe do a little research to find out what some of those general laws are, as well as their political climate? Absolutely. That's why it's best some people feel to believe that they are travel agents. However, if you are educated enough to book your own travel, you may want to consider doing research first about the climate, the crimes, the advisories, your protection. There are many celebrities that go out, of con con out to these countries, I'm sorry, and things happen that is just unbelievable. Yes, that is true. So you seem to enjoy what you do. So what made you make this your thing? travel agency. Everybody love money, right? Show you right. <laughs> yes. Everybody love discounts, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody loves good customer service. How many of you are socialites, like to socialize with people? So, if I tell you you can make money off your own travel, would you believe me? If I tell you, this is the hot question. Uh -oh. If I tell you, you can make money while you're sleeping in travel, All would right you then. believe me? Mm. My experience myself, the first time I became a travel agent was February 2nd, 2021. And we all know the sounds that Cash App makes, Chime makes, Zelle makes. My phone was buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. I thought somebody was begging, begging, begging. That was my time, banking, 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 because of my travel agency website. And when you are a socialite, nevertheless a Christian, man or woman of God, a person with great customer service skills, you'll make money while you're sleeping. Now, I like the sound of that, cha-ching. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, if you want to be in touch with our dear agent here, Grandison Gustain, you can go to grandisongustain.intellitravel.com. 
www.thepeacemaker.com. And of course, he'll hook you up. And if you want to do what he does to make some cha-ching while you sleeping, you know what I'm saying? That's what you need. You need to do that. But um, finally, what about a return on the money spent on my trips? You were saying that you make money uh, discounts and what have you. Uh, is it really something that's worth maybe walking away from your current career, or is it just like a sideline kind of gig? What would you recommend? I myself, I'm a busy man. However, I do it as a hobby. But if you know that you are that people's person, you can do it full time, you can do it part time, or you can do it as a hobby. I take my iPad with me everywhere I go, from church to work to public to the grocery store. I get the booking, I get paid, we're both happy, you're on your trip, I'm happy. That's absolutely wonderful. So in closing, what is it that you'd like to share with us that perhaps I didn't ask you about concerning travel or your business? It's go time. What are you waiting for? Well, all right. Well, you know, I want to say thank you, sir, for sharing with Absolutely. us on today, uh, igniting that fire beneath us to take some time out for ourselves, go somewhere, enjoy life, embrace all that God's got out there for us. Thank you, agents and agents, rather, Grandison Gustain, for sharing with us today. For more information, once again, on becoming a travel agent or for more travel tips, you can visit him online, grandisongustain.intellitravel.com. And up next is our word explosion under the direction of our senior pastor, Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson. Let us now receive our praise ministry. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God tonight for greater life. Our host tonight, Elder Loretta Petit, and our guest, Minister Grandison Gustain. At this time, let us receive our praise ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, yes, I'm ready to go. It's go time. Hallelujah. Good evening, Greater. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Let's just begin to saturate our areas with praise and thanksgiving unto the most high God. Hallelujah for our God is in control. Steadfast and movable and nothing is impossible for him. Hallelujah. Oh. Let me say this. And glorious, yes. so we put our trust in your name, Jesus. Yes, there's nothing to fear, you are here with us. Oh, God, so we put our trust in your name, Jesus. Blessing and honor, blessing and honor.
your name, Jesus. There's nothing to fear. You are here with us. So we put our hope in your name, Jesus. Blessing and honor, say. Blessing and honor, glory and honor. My God, forever and ever, all of the honor, all of the praise is yours.
For he's worthy of all glory and honor. He's worthy to be praised. This day, this day, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Well, it's go time. We're taking I Am's message everywhere. We honor our senior pastor, Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson, and our first lady, Elder Jasmine Martin Robinson, and our overseers, Pastor D and Bishop. Well, this is one of our favorite part of our worship experience. This is where we get to welcome our very special guests. So if this is your first time worshiping with us tonight, we ask that you would please stand. We want you to tap in to your new church family. Any first time visitors, if you're working Worshiping virtually, we ask that you would put FTV in the chat. Well, we just praise the Lord tonight. April, it is go time here at Greater. It's the month that we have set aside for all us to be intentional about our winning souls for Christ. The attire is come as you are, and we want to get you ready to invite some people to church who need to tap in to a great new church home. Partner with us as we build the kingdom and grow the church. Join us every Tuesday at 12 noon for Virtual Miracle Tuesday, live on GSS YouTube. Join us each Wednesday morning at 6.30 a.m. for the Greater Army Prayer Line as we step shifting toward everybody praying call 504-383-0995 join us in-house and virtually for word explosion each wednesday at 7 p.m beginning with our iron sharpens iron at 6 45 p.m the louisiana southern barrett district is calling all ushers deacons, altar workers, customer care, hospitality, and ministry of worship to train and prepare for the full gospel conference on Saturday, April the 13th at 9 a.m. to 12 noon here at the Mother Church. Bishop-elect Pastor Rob is the host. Overseer Charles Otis Sr. is our district overseer. Save the date. At 70, it's her runway. Celebrate on a yacht with Pastor D on, for her 70th birthday on June the 6th and 7th in Miami, Florida. You can scan the QR codes for details. For more information on these and other announcements, you can visit thehouseofgreater.org forward slash GSS now. Now, would you receive our senior pastor and our first lady the gifts that God has given to this house? You will glorify. Yeah. Do you have a few more moments to worship our King? Come on, one more time. You are glorified. Yes, He's glorified in this temple. He's glorified in the heavens. He's glorified in the earth. Come on, come on, will you tell him, be glorified. You are glorified. Yeah. One more time, we crown you Lord of Lords. We crown you King of Kings. Come on, come on. We crown you King of Kings. If he's your king, will you declare and decree that he is? God bless you, sounds of, I'd say sounds of change, greater sound, hallelujah. 
one church, two states, every now and then. <laughs> Amen for greater sound on this evening. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it was. Amen. When is our next trip, Bishop Elect? Because it, it, it just stirred up a little something in me. <laughs> the more he talked, the more I said, when is the next one? Oh, Lord. <laughs> awesome job tonight. Job well yes, done. Yes, Come on and give yes. God Great praise. Great job to Elder Pastor, Petit as well. Pastor Jory Miller, job well done. Great yes, topic yes. tonight. Great topic. It was it was so, so wonderful, and we really give God praise uh, for everything that is taking place in our midst. And then Elder Petit just jumped right back in. I didn't know whether she was a host, a newscaster, right. a broadcaster, elements. just in Doing her element done tonight. For years. Amen. <laughs> Job well done all the way around. We certainly give God praise because... Uh, there's so many great things that are happening at Greater right now. So many now. great things. So many great things. And, and this is a highlight that we really want to press into and put emphasis on. And, uh, you know, it, it's super important. I'm going to circle back to Sunday. Hold on to that. But if you have been a member of Greater two years or less, the next new member's orientation is Saturday April 20th at 10 a.m. Yes. Come on and give God praise for that. And if, if you haven't done it, go ahead and quickly sign up. The more people we have in new members orientation, that simply t says go time is working and we are growing. And uh, we, even Lady J and I, we come out and we engage yes. with our new members. We love being there in that setting. And can I, so, I, I just want to share just a quick please, testimony because please. as a college student, of course, Greater is home, will always be home. But I had an opportunity to co connect with some churches as a college student going yeah. away to Atlanta. And then as an adult, I remember going to all these different churches. And if there was a new members orientation, guess who was there? I was there and no matter how big the church was, it didn't matter if I didn't know anyone there, getting to that new members orientation and learning about the ministry as a whole, the mission, the vision of that church, all of the ministries yes. that it had to offer, it just made me love the church even more. I'd already made the decision. But I promise you, that is what helped to take me to the next step. That's and it. after I did my orientation, then I connected probably most times with the music ministry. But other times it was administratively volunteering where I could. And the more I got connected with those ministries after orientation, the smaller and smaller the church became. And those people were like family to me. Still to this day, to I'm this talking day. about from Los Angeles, yes. before your church, white, black, I all I met them all because I was an active member of that church. So I just wanted to share. I'm no different from any of you who are new members. I did my work. You know, there was a TV show a couple of years ago called Everybody Loves Raymond. Yes, I While remember that While you were talking, y'all remember that? Lady J was talking. I just felt like everybody loves Lady J. Oh, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> try to be sweet. But that is really what it's all about. And listen, if you have been a part of this church and you have not, you haven't shaken our hand, you haven't hugged our neck, and you're a new member, we want to see you in that class so we can engage with you. We want to be able uh, to meet you and make that connection. So Saturday, April the 20th, that is your day. And then you want yes, to and I'm very excited about this. We've been pushing it. We've been pushing it. Um, it's a one church, two states event. But how many of you are excited about the elevation of our own senior pastor, Bishop Elect? I'm it's excited. coming so fast. Y'all praying, I got to fit in my dress and all that. No, but it is about you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but there's a lot of things going on in the background. Why y'all laughing? <laughs> it's a lot of laughing. No, listen, pray, pray. But anyway, I'm excited about it for so many different reasons. But there is a special elevation celebration just for our church. Yes. Full Gospel is going to do its thing. But this is our celebration. It's happening on Friday, the day after the consecration, July 
July 12th. The ticket cost is $75. It's going to be the most fabulous luncheon I want to say that you will ever have been at because it's honoring this man of God. Uh, you can pay amen, amen, and they are doing it up. I tell you, the committee is working hard. Sister Lavonzel Bridges and her team. Thank it's you. going to be spectacular. Tickets are going fast. Changing a generation, they've sold out of theirs. They're already asking for what? more. And I'm like, wait a minute now. Don't, Mother wow. Church, come on, come through. I don't want to give them yours. So don't delay. Don't delay. Get your tickets today, tonight, on Sundays. They're in Morton Hall. Um, and you can purchase those there. Cash, check, credit card. But it's going to be a grand, grand event. And the last announcement emphasis that we want to make, and this is really super near and dear to my heart. One of our very own founding fathers of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, he was my Episcopal instructor, and we know and love him very well. That's Bishop Andy C. Luther. Luther, he's, listen, he's been featured in the new docudrama Testament of the story of Moses. Watch this, y'all, yeah. on Netflix. Yeah. He's on Netflix right now. So let's show our love and respect. It's right there on the screen. Yes, I Bishop saw it because he, he made us watch it. And it oh, was yeah, really, no, yes. it was really a it was yes. a blessing, though. I'm watching again tonight. As <laughs> soon as I get off the clock, that's going to be our watching. Uh, and, and it's on the screen. If, and now, those of you, how many Netflix watchers do I have? Even if you're in the it's virtual. Oh, yes. Yes. My now, watch. People. Here, it's real easy. You don't have to memorize the whole thing because I do this all the time. Go to your search bar and just type in Moses. Moses. If you type in Moses, it's going to go right there. All right. It will bless you. I'm still watching it. It is really, uh, you know, it's just great to see something clean on TV. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. So this is just good, clean Christian watching. It's educational. And then, not to mention, just to be able to see Bishop Luter up close and personal on your screen, it will bless you. So we want to take advantage of that. Before I go into offering, Sunday was just off the chain. What a resurrection oh, Sunday. Oh my goodness. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. You preached. I bless the you. The choir sang. Look Real at this. Good. Look at the screen. Oh, Look at wow. the screen, y'all. Yes, yes. These pictures. The dancers wait danced. A, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Y'all just had to put me up there crying like that? Oh. Lord Jesus. Him was even, full. I was full of the, <laughs> the Lord was in the room, and I really want to thank God. Uh, even circling all the way back to Holy Symposium. So, I'm telling you, Palm Sunday, Holy Symposium, Pace. Pastor yes. D, amazing Sister job. Gretchen, Pace, amazing job. I believe all of these things are a part of the resurrection experience. And before I leave Holy Symposium, did your first lady preach or what? Good Friday, thing it's after thing, our youth ministry. Minister Tawana Henry and yes, your entire team. great job. Job well done. Our hospitality, our deacons working together yes. to embrace our first time visitors. Amazing. Just amazing. I am so thankful to God to be able to give leadership in such a time as this. Give yourselves a hand one more time. How we praise God for Amen. each and every and single pace one. And pace and the giveaway. Yeah, I said Oh, you said pace. that as yeah, well? Yes, yeah, just a amazing. phenomenal job. And thank you again to all of you who um, went to Watson Memorial with me. That was yes. a first for me Woo. on a Good Friday message. And I felt your prayers all week long. I didn't know you either. Just a blessing, just a blessing. And then lastly, lastly, because we've got to move on. Thank you to all of you who wished us a happy seventh yes. wedding anniversary. You got it. It's so like us to be in church. Come on, while we celebrate our love. But our love was built on Jesus. He is the foundation of all that we do and how we live. I'm going to give teaching time back, but I got to tell you, you this. Okay. Bishop told me, do you know how many anniversaries Pastor D and I spent with Jesus. Oh, goodness. I was like, really? No, they went Look. away. <laughs> Every December. No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, uh, your first lady has just been a tremendous help me, and I really thank God for her because, uh, as I was sharing earlier, many of you 
would not have known me if it wasn't for her saying yes. So every anniversary, you ought to tell your first lady, thank you for saying yes. <laughs> I appreciate you. Happy anniversary again, happy baby. Happy anniversary. All righty. We're going to re get ready at this time. And also, I want to thank God. So many of you have uh, heard of the transition of my uncle, yes. uh, his home going. Thank you for your prayers. Keep my 103-year-old grandmother in your prayers that was her baby keep her lifted in prayer thank you deacons just keep on moving as i'm talking and all of my mother my aunts all of them pray for our family as our deacons are moving in the aisles lady jane we'll just keep pushing right here thank you to all of our covenant partners all of our tithers we certainly appreciate every single one of you tonight grace and peace be upon you and then for those of you that are giving virtually in the virtual space or even in-house. Uh, Jay, hurry up and tell them the ways in which they can give. Yes, Elder so you Jay. can give via our church website at houseofgreater.org. Just click the giving tab. You can text to give at 504-517-8071. Text any dollar amount to give this way. You can use the Givelify app. Search for Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church. You can also give via Cash App, dollar sign GSS Men. Uh, if you give this way, do include your full name and category in the memo. You can give via Zelle, giving at gssmen.org. If you give this way, do include your full name and category in the memo. And then finally, you can mail in your seeds to our P.O. Box, 872-798, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70187. Tonight is my time and my turn because I'm a tither. Where are my tithers? Tonight is your time and turn. Wave high. I see you standing. Amen. In fact, Amen. come on and stand up. I'm tithing tonight. Just stand where you are. Come on and give God praise Amen. for our tithers. Even if you're tithing in your space, you can put it in the comments. We acknowledge it. We certainly thank God for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every tither, open now the window of heaven, pour out favor, influence, concepts, and opportunities. Rebuke the devourer for their sake, and we give you praise for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, tithers, right where you are. Amen. We're all making this confession over our offering on tonight, over our tithes. Will you repeat after me? Lord, it's not a debt. Lord, it's not a debt. It's a seed. It's a seed. And I'm sowing it. I'm sowing I believe, it. I believe you, can you can grow it because of this seed. Of this the seed, quality, of my life quality of my life will be made better. Will be made better. I, don't I don't need another chance, another chance to mess up doing the same thing with your seed thing. in hand. Say, this seed, this seed is, is my, better my better chance. Amen. Amen. Deacon, serve the people of God with joy. Let us give both the in house and in the virtual space at this time. Clap your hands and give the great I am a hand of praise. Oh, y'all can do better than that tonight. Give the Lord Jesus a hand of praise. We definitely are grateful to God to be able to share the word of God in this context and format with you. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to be uh, kind of technical in our teaching time together. Uh, I'm teaching a rather unorthodox subject matter. However, it always fits the context of the days after Resurrection Sunday uh, for me to deal with the resurrected Jesus. And so tonight, I want, with the time that I have, to quickly rush in, and I want to talk about when go time meets 
the resurrected Jesus. When go time meets the resurrected Jesus. Say it out loud. Go time must meet the resurrected Jesus. Now it's a very in, uh, interesting topic, I feel, because uh, there are some foundational things that I really want to labor in tonight. Three areas, and I want you to at least have those three areas in your notes, uh, just in case, because I want to lecture a little bit and not really uh, teach you anything per se. I'm motivated by something that I heard Pastor D say, and I always do this, so let me pause and give honor to whom honor is due because we didn't say it tonight. Can we honor God for our, our spiritual parents, for Pastor D and Bishop? Thank you all so much. So uh, something Pastor D said that really sparked my interest, and that is that sometimes we need what's called a refresher's course, a course of refreshment. Uh, for, for one group, for the matured believer, it's refreshing. But then for believers that may be in, we want to make it clear, a babe in Christ is someone who is really new to the faith new to the faith. I also want to add that you could have been in church all your life and still find yourself, don't laugh, Elder Vaughn, shame on you. You could still find yourself as a babe in Christ because, because there are different maturity levels. And just because you've been going to church a long time, doesn't mean you out of diapers. You got some believers that are wearing pull-ups. <laughs> some believers that aren't potty trained just yet. <laughs> and then there are some believers that need to go back to potty training and kind of start all over again because, you know, this, this Christian journey could sometimes be a trip. You know, it can, it can pick you up and knock you down and, you know, it can test your faith. How many of you have had a faith testing moment even in the first portion of this year already? Come on, wave. Yeah. Uh, the death of a loved one. Debt. You know, debt can really mess with your faith when your money isn't right. Um, disease, a diagnosis, dysfunctions, things that we can't even mention and talk about out loud because, you know, I recognize I've been pastoring long enough to know that uh, there's not always a lot of safe space in the church. Can we leave that? Can we just let that elephant sit in the middle of the room for a, little, a second? There's not always a lot of safety. I, I've discovered, and I'm getting into it, there is a distinct difference between being saved and safe. And uh, Holy Spirit has dealt with me in that area for a number of years. And so, Pastor... What do you do when you know you're sure enough saved? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm saved, but I can't really tap into those unsafe areas. You know, how do I deal with that? That's where you have to allow the Word of God to be your secret judge. Let me try it again, because that might not have been the answer some people wanted. Some people want to go to counseling. Some people want to tell their friends. Some people post on Facebook. 
And then those same people will turn around and say, I don't know how everybody knows my business. (laughs) (laughs) Then I have people in the room, and please be careful and hear me loud and clear, that internalize their pain. That ain't healthy either. Because when you internalize that pain, then that turns into high blood pressure. That turns into diabetes. That turns into overeating. I'll go another further. Unnecessary retail therapy when you don't have financial therapy to therapize the retail that you retailed. In other words, you ain't got money to pay the bills that you done made. You just shopping to be shopping and then talk about, oh, Lord, the devil done attack me in these bills. No, 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 no. Okay? Food therapy. Recreational drug usage. Alcoholism. All of these offsets of there being no safe space. What do I do? Believers, either we're going to believe the word of God or we're not going to believe it. You're going to have to allow the word of God. You hear me keep talking about these Bible passages and verses. Passages and verses give you principles and value so that you can leave with power and victory. Now, either it's going to work or it's not going to work. But I'm in my lecture already when I tell you, you cannot keep going to the garden where Jesus has been laid, looking for him in the tomb, And seeing he's not there. So what are you saying to me, Pastor? I am saying, after tonight, the Lord is no longer obligated to be where and what you think you need him to be because you refuse to accept The resurrected Jesus for who he is. He's not where you last saw him. Rabbi Shamandio. That ain't a part of no lecture. I'm talking about Rabbi Shando because I feel that in my spirit. You can't make Jesus be what you want him to be. Come on, talk. You, You got that elder. I need the whole church. I even need you at home to come into agreement. Well, I've been saying he is what I want him to be for years. Yeah, you, he can't go cuss people out when you want them cussed out. Now, we got to cut that off. We got to cut that out. If we're going to preach go time, we're going to have to take go time and cause it to meet the resurrected Jesus. Because there are some things that the resurrected Jesus is able to do. Now, when I talk about the resurrected Jesus, I am talking about uh, theologically here. Let's, Let's level for a minute. Jesus had an earthly ministry that lasted how long? Anybody? Three years. Three years. Okay. After he rose from the dead, some things happened for him that began to defy natural logic. Okay, now let's go to see that. We're going to look at this thing in three ways. We're going to look at it foundationally. That's the first thing I want to talk about, the foundational Jesus. Then we're going to talk about the format of Jesus. And then we'll try and close with the function of Jesus. Did y'all catch those three things? If I got any note takers in the room, y'all at least help the note takers take good notes. The number one we're going to deal with is the foundational Jesus, the foundation. Number two, the format. And then number three, the function, the function. 
So at the foundation, let's, let's straighten this out. What's the difference? You're talking about the resurrected Jesus. I didn't know there was no other one. <laughs> Where you get this from? Well, prior to his resurrection, we believe by faith, by grace, through faith, in a thing called hypostatic union. It's real simple. We believe that Jesus was 100% God as well as 100% man. On earth, he is 100% percent man in eternity he is 100 percent God y'all get that equation right how do we know he's a man when he got hungry what did he do we got thirsty when he got sleepy no time to do it we have scripture that supports these human functions. He is, I'll stay here for our viewing audience, 100% man. Upset him, and the Bible says he got angry. Paul picks up his pen and begins to mix the union by saying things to us like, watch this. Be angry, <laughs> but sin not. Some of y'all looking like, I really got to be like Jesus to pull this off. Because he is what? 100% God and 100% man. Philippians talks about, and he thought it not robbery. He could have. Now, now, now watch. The, this is going to get deep. I'm, I'm trying not to stay here. He could have robbed. And if you can't see me over there, just watch me on the screen. He could have robbed his father of his godliness. Because what percentage of the Godhead does he own? 100%. He thought it not robbery. In other words, let me, let, me, let me talk about that scripture in Philippians for a split second. He never thought about robbing his father of godness in order to escape the fact that he was what? 100% man. Satan told us. Look what Satan told us. When he was in his wilderness temptation, he says, Jesus, I know you can jump off this mountain. And if you jump, a legion of angels will come flying out of nowhere and rescue you because Satan knows not only is he 100% man, but he's also 100% God. Can we build the foundation? Now, when he rose from the dead, stay with me. He did not divorce himself of his 100% manhood. Oh, Lord, have mercy. He just took off mortality. Y'all remember that verse? I'm talking mature believer talk a little bit and new Christian understand. Jesus took off his mortality and symbolically gave his humanity 
to you and I when he said, take, eat, this is my body. So every time you take communion, you are symbolically taking place or, ta- or participating in the inheritance of what your elder brother gave you when he rose from the dead. Don't you miss another, tell your neighbor, don't you miss another time of communion. So you hear me say these crazy statements like this little piece of bread means you have a little piece of him inside of you because he gave you. I think I'm going to teach, I'm going to lecture on this for a minute. So if you, whatever you don't get tonight, I'll see you the next time. He gave you his body and then said, I wasn't broken, but I want you to break it to distribute it amongst yourself. Here's my blood. Now, of course, we understand the blood. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But the new covenant says in Hebrews, because of his blood, your sins have been forgiven, watch another one here, and forgotten. Oh, oh, I'm trying to lecture and it's jumping on me. Glory to God. Let me try it again for the note taker. I want you to confess it. Say it out loud in this house and even in your house. Thank you, Jesus. By your blood, my sin has been forgiven and forgotten. He has thrown your sin as far as the east is from the west. Now, in some cases, let me see. I'm directionally challenged right now, but we're going to try this. I'm standing in the west. I just stood in the east. You're one step away from total forgiveness. And the only reason your sins keep being remembered is you keep bringing them up. I didn't know if y'all were going to say amen or not right there. I've been believing that for a good little while. If you have been dealing with, I don't want to see your hand because I'm going to make it a safe space. If you've been dealing with any area of guilt in your personal life where when we talk to you in private in public oh lord i thank you god i thank you you can praise him in public but if i were to talk to you in private and you start talking about pastor you just don't know what i've done right if you've been dealing with holding on to that annual guilt and all of those reminders Let me remind you that Jesus died so that his father would forget what you did by way of his sacrifice. He died, now watch this here, and then he was buried. So when he was buried, your sin was buried with him. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost, those of you that could do it on cue? Because somebody is going from guilt into grace while I'm lecturing about it. Now, that ain't enough. Because I'm I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm full gospel to the core, but I still got a little bit of Baptist in me. And if you put him on the cross and you leave him, in, see, I, I told Lady J once upon a time, you can't put on Good Friday, you got one job, put him on the cross. It's Friday, leave him there. Because Sunday cometh 
On Sunday, he ain't on the cross no more. On Saturday, he was in the grave. But on Sunday, I wish I had a church here. Early. <laughs> Bright early. Sunday morning. He got up with us. I didn't do it on Sunday. I just had to do it one time on Wednesday. Ah, that's where it starts jumping on me. All power. Heaven and earth. Don't miss this one. And things under the earth. It's all in his hand. I got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. I am he who was dead and is now alive forevermore. Glory to God. This is the foundation of our faith. We're talking about the foundation. So when he got up as a man, John chapter 4, he sat by a well and he got thirsty. But when he got up from the grave, he, don't, he says, I don't need water. I am water. When he's on earth, he eats bread. But the eternal Jesus says, I am bread. Take, eat. This is my body, which was broken or Woo given for you. No man takes my life. I gave my life so that you could have my life. No, 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 no. Don't run past that. I want to teach you about this resurrection, resurrected Jesus. I gave my life. Did y'all catch that? So that you could have my life. I was seated in heavenly places. I came from eternity to earth so that you could see how to go from earth to eternity and sit in a seat that I prepared for you. Now is this making sense for in my father's house or what? Many mansions. There's so much room in there. And David is prophesying in Psalm 23. He prepared a table before me. You thought that was for your haters. He was talking about your spiritual rank. Your spiritual seating arrangement. No big eyes, no little U's. In the kingdom of God, everybody got a seat. You got a seat. I got a seat. We all got a seat in the kingdom of God. Everyone say foundation. Foundation. So at the foundation, let's look now. Where do I want to go from here? At the format. Luke 24. Are y'all with me? Luke 24, verse number 13. Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verse number 13. That same day. Now, we're going back into the story of, uh, this is like Saturday of the crucifixion when we talk about that same day. So the Bible says that same day, two of Jesus' followers, we will find out later, it's a married couple named Mary and Cleophas. Uh, the, the presumption is that this is Mary, the mother of Jesus' sister. So this is his aunt and uncle. But Luke calls them two of his followers. 
they're on a seven mile journey. Now, when I've taught this in time pa times past, I understood the geography of Southern California, so I want to help you think about this. From Greater St. Stephen to uh, Dillard University on foot. Why are you smiling so big? I said, <laughs> I said Dillard Paris here. <laughs> he just went and smiling, grinning like hyena. Okay. On foot. So just, uh, I'm messing with you about your school. That's your school, I know. That's your school. So imagine this. We're walking from church to your school. And some of y'all say, my God, <laughs> I ain't going to see Jesus today. <laughs> now, that's what the Bible says, that they were on a seven-mile journey. And they're going seven miles from Jerusalem, heading toward a place called Emmaus. And as they were walked, as they walked along and were talking about everything that happened, verse number 14, uh, 15 rather, says, as they talked and discussed these things, everyone say these things. Jesus himself does what? Read. How quickly? Come on, read the read the passage. How quickly? He did what? And did what? Up and out of nowhere. Now go back to the board here. Leave that scripture up there, please. The earthly man could not operate in a function called suddenly. Because as a man... He has to walk everywhere he goes. And John chapter 4 shows us if he walks too long, guess what happens to him? He gets tired. But the benefit of the resurrected Jesus is locked inside of suddenly. You ought, to you ought to pause right there and tell him, thank you for getting up from the dead. Because he can do things now in his glorified state, in his eternal, I'm, I'm lecturing, in his eternal state that he could not do in his earthly state. I say, I don't want to holler and get you emotional because I want to educate your spirit man. Some of you mature folk heard that. Your spirit man has to be taught how to know the difference between the earthly Jesus and the eternal Jesus. Suddenly, everyone say suddenly. He comes and he walks with them, but the same issue that we encountered on Sunday with Mary in the garden shows up again in verse number 16. Do y'all see it? But God did what? Kept them from recognizing him. Why? Where's the Bible reader at? Where's, where's those that love the word of God? The Lord who loves us, why would he keep them? He said he'll withhold no good thing from you. Didn't he say that? So it's a good thing that he's resurrected, but the text is saying, but God, they can't recognize Jesus because the Lord has put, <laughs> he has not opened their eyes to resurrection power. And you know what is happening in 2024? We still have believers whose eyes have not been open to resurrection power. Because when your eyes are open to resurrection power, and we say that I am is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider, when your eyes are open, you will not depend on him to help you hit the lottery. Right. 
you will start believing that he is a supernatural provider. And if he does not provide, it will not be provided. So resurrection power works like this. I worship him for provision before it comes. Because he is a provider. If I worship him, he will then do what he already does. But he will know that I'm not just worshiping him because it's done. I'm worshiping him because of who he is. He's Jehovah Rapha. I'm going to teach about that in some days to come. It's on my curriculum. He's more than just a physical healer. He's the God that takes your bitterness and turns it into betterness. Because a lot of your bitterness leads to sickness. Can I go back to the communion passage? Y'all think I'm making this up? When you don't understand how to take communion, guess what Paul said happens to you? And for this cause, many of you are sick. Some have even gotten weak. And some people have fallen asleep as though they died, if not experienced premature death. Huh. Do you know, I'm going to say something really hard in my lecture, that if you will learn how to forgive people and let go of some of these oughts, because what you know ye not that some of your oughts can take up demonic format and begin to attack your cardiovascular system and your blood system and your neurological system. Lean in lovingly on your neighbor and say, please let it go. You hold on to that thing for so long and it starts threatening your mental health and it can become Alzheimer's and dementia and cause you schizophrenia and all of these things. There are just some things that offend you that when you have the Holy Ghost working in your life, the Lord has given you a supernatural mechanism to let things roll off of your back the same way water rolls off of a duck's back. I didn't make it up. Oh, I'm still lecturing. I didn't make it up. I'm just teaching the format. Come on, everybody say the resurrected Jesus. Say it in your home out loud, the resurrected Jesus. The resurrected Jesus can do things that the earthly Jesus could not do. I'll stop right there and I'll leave you with this. Most of y'all, please, Sam. And get ready, Jay. If I told you we had to walk from greater to Dillard to have a conversation with Jesus, as deep as it sounds, some of y'all being deep right now. Where my walking shoes at? <laughs> devil is a liar. I say you were. I said the devil is. If I could guarantee you that a seven-mile walk would produce a different format of Jesus. Most of y'all wouldn't be a taker. You say, I ain't doing that. Because if you put it back on the screen one last time, I'm out of here when I show you. The Bible says they didn't even recognize him because God wouldn't let him do it. So even if he shows up, you wouldn't even know it was him. And I want to say this to you. The benefit of go time is that the resurrected Jesus is going to teach you as we study these 
these principles and these values, you're going to be taught how to take the limitations off of the Lord. To minister to people who you don't even think are ministry ready or ministry worthy. And as you minister to them, you're going to look up and you're going to walk away with new power, new victory. I even want to prophesy, the man of God told us tonight, you're going to look up and what would you do if your reward was the Lord saying, it's your go time to go travel. It's your go time to go enjoy life. What happens, elders, when you can start seeing that the Lord is rewarding you in life for living your life for Him? Do you believe that's possible? That He's really able to do exceeding abundantly? Are you believing the Scripture above all? I can ask or think I'm driving a Mazda today, but the will of the Lord might be for you to do a Mercedes and not struggle on the payment. So don't go trading in your car, going in no luxury car. Talking about Pastor Rob said, go get me a new car. And then you get repo. Talking about it's Pastor Rob's fault. No. <laughs> See, you're talking about the earthly Jesus, not the eternal Jesus. He's able to do exceeding abundantly he will meet you right where you are come and walk with you and talk with you if you believe it and you receive it give the Lord a hand of praise and I pray that you've been blessed I promise you I'm gonna come back and finish my lecture series on go time meeting the resurrected Jesus Very quickly, every hand is lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my sister. I pray for my brother. I pray for them even in the virtual space that tonight the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart has been accepted by you, O Lord, and received by your people. Transform somebody by the renewing of their mind tonight. Put these principles and verses put these powerful values in their spirit and give them victory like never before in Jesus' name amen perhaps there's somebody here tonight man woman boy or girl you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin there are acronyms on the screen they're there to help you it's going to help you to make a decision you can accept Christ you can become a member of this church You can be reclaimed. You can recommit to Christ tonight. I'm not from New Orleans. I'm not from the area. You can join under Watch Care. Watch Care is so powerful and it's so important because no matter where you're from, that means you'll have somebody watching for your soul, developing you spiritually. While you're away from your home, you get development while you're on your way to your heavenly home. And then lastly, we just believe upon confession that the Holy Spirit comes into your life. You're saved, but maybe tonight you say, hey, there's got to be more than this. It has to be less of me and more of him. There's more. I want the fullness of the Spirit, and I'm seeking him tonight. There's an email address there. There's a telephone number that's there for you that are in the virtual space, you can send us an email address, you, an email rather, you can send us a telephone call, give us a call, we're on standby, because we really want you to allow go time to meet the resurrected Jesus. If you stay with me this far, I pray that you've heard me labor in word and doctrine, and that your spirit has been somehow pricked, it's been matured, it's been pushed, to go into another level, another realm of Jesus. As heads are bowed one more time, I prayed a general prayer, but I'm praying for those that need to receive salvation tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the person upon whose ears this word has fallen. And I pray that it will not fall on deaf ears. We stand on your word. It won't go out void without giving a return. We receive the return now 
we decree and declare in fact it is go time it is harvest time in greater saint stephen by grace through faith and through the strong name of jesus we pray let the whole church say yes and amen listen if you're in house just simply pick up all of your belongings make your way to the altar workers are here right now to work with you through the process of getting connected to our church you're in the virtual space use those acronyms that are on the screen and you can become a part of the body of christ and greater saint stephen we're going to sing this to give you an opportunity to make this up in your mind come on and help us out everybody say need me here come on all over the room saying me meet me here meet me meet me here will you meet him at the cross meet the resurrected jesus here say this for me real quickly jump in and grab this and then say all to Jesus everybody I come on church say that surrender all to him to him I freely sing in your home I will ever I, I will Everybody. I, I, surrender. I surrender all. Oh, oh, I, I surrender my all. All, all to be my all. To all to thee, my blessed Savior. clap your hands and give the Lord Jesus oh, praise. Name tonight. Thank oh you, my elders. goodness. Thank was you, your man. spirit man strengthened on tonight? Come on, come on. The word was when go time meets the resurrected Jesus. How many of you in the room are glad that you have access to a resurrected Jesus? You can recognize him. Come on, somebody. You can see him. You can get to know him for yourself. He's alive and well. He's no longer the grave but he's a living God and because he lives he's worthy to be praised hallelujah thank you Jesus what a powerful hallelujah. word from our man of God on tonight can we thank God come on for the word on tonight and for how you poured God bless you pastor well God bless each and every single one of you we are so looking forward to Sunday because it's a rare occasion to be able to say we'll we be back. we right back with you <laughs> you got us one more time on the first sunday we certainly thank god resurrection sunday was the fifth sunday and we were here with you we'll be back first sunday we'll be sharing in the lord's supper it's go time month and we want you to tap in we are we want them to tap in we want them did i say it wrong yes, yes. So tell we me want, how. and I want you all to get familiar with this yes, language, church family. It's go time month for us, right? Our commission, yes. our action Got is you. to take his message everywhere. But to those in which we're taking his message everywhere, we want them to tap in to the worship experience. So y'all got it? As you witness, 
As you minister to people. <laughs> I stands to be correct. No, no, no. Everybody you got looking it. like you got to get it right you got now. It, you got okay, it. I got you. I got As you. As you invite them, invite them to tap into this experience, to tap yes. into the word, to tap into the music. Come on, to tap into our, our beautiful welcoming family. It's so much to tap in, to tap into our youth ministry. Yeah. You've got to meet people where they are. And I want to prophesy. I want to speak into the virtual space that there are going to be people that come out of the virtual space in house to tap into your new church home. Yes. I'm believing God in the month of April that we're going to see a harvest of souls yes. right here in And Greater. I think there's a special treat on the third Sunday. Can I say it or no, not yet? Yes. We got somebody? So on the third Sunday, we're in our Come As You Are attire. We're doing a little bit of church fitness as we praise and worship. So that's a great Sunday to invite some people to tap in. Come on tap to the in. whole experience. We'll yes. be worshiping him, but we're going to get our bodies together as Absolute. well. Absolutely. Know ye not that your body yes. is the temple, the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you don't want the Holy Ghost living inside of you talking about ain't no room in here for me to be able to do exceeding abundantly. <laughs> Come on, let's stand up and go home. It's been a great night. God bless you, Virtual Church. We love you so much. Thank you for tapping in and tuning in tonight. Give your neighbor a hug of love, a look, a hug, a touch. Oh, look at the scent more. It's oh, so sweet. <laughs> hallelujah. Hug on them now. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. As you hold your love for a second, remember Lady J and I will be at the altar because it is family night. We want to shake your hand and love on you as well. Father, we thank you now. Tonight has been a great night. Give us traveling grace that when we get home, we will find things better than we left them. Jesus, thank you for doing what you did. You rose from the dead for us. Thank you for being the resurrected Jesus. And we receive you in every way. Go with us now as we go down from this place. And now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all you can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us all. Unto him be glory in this church, your home, your school, your job. Wherever you may be, let all the people of God say yes, yes. and amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you. This God is our you. prayer. We love you. Have a good night. Bless you. Bless you, sir. Thank you for worshiping with us, Pastor Rob, Lady J, and the overseers, Bishop and Pastor D. Pray you continue to connect with Greater. Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time for Word Explosion, or Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m. Central Time for the Sunday morning worship experience. Here are all the ways you can donate and support the Greater Vision. The church website at houseofgreater.org Click the giving tab. Text to give at 504-517-8071. Text any dollar amount to give this way. Give LaFi. Search Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church. Cash app, dollar sign G-S-S-M-I-N. Include full name and category in the memo. Zelle, giving at G-S-S-M-I-N.org. Include your full name and category in the memo. Tithes and offerings can also be mailed to P.O. Box 872798, New Orleans, Louisiana 70187. Stay connected. Text GSS to 504-276-7021 or visit houseofgreater.org for more info.